everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Wednesday, July 22nd. Courtney, we're halfway through the week. Oh, thank the Lord, huh? <laughs> and also, it's always good when you come down in the studio and there's a glass of wine waiting for you. That's right. Cheers. Cheers. And you arranged to have this wine, right? This is from our friends over at Nice Winery. Is that it? That's right. Today is, of course, Wine Club Wednesday. And this is the 2019 uh, Nice Winery Ariana. And what's fabulous about this bottle here, while you're taking a sip, mm. uh, all sales support the work of Op Heart Foundation. It's a local charity serving infants born with congenital heart defects. Oh, my God. Gosh. Yes, so it's wonderful. That's what I love about Nice Winery is they always have certain bottles that they offer the public to buy for different charity. There's a breast cancer wine and of course this one and Ryan Levy and company, they are so great, so hospitable and they never forget where they came from. Absolutely, and in case you didn't know, Ryan was a scholarship recipient from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo mm -hmm. years ago, well, just a couple years ago, right? <laughs> Last very year. young man, very young, <laughs> handsome man. And he has, he has taken that money and really created this incredible business and it's cool to see him continue to give back. And their story is really incredible too because not only are they about to open um, their their new uh, wine tasting room, their um, their vineyard, if, if lack of a better word, right? Because yeah. they're going to be growing grapes there as well. Um, but they also have grapes that come from Argentina and California. So when they are bottling and making these labels for themselves and for their own um, with their nice winery label on there. These are grapes and, and that are grown all over and that they're very particular about. Of course, Ryan's a sommelier and really fantastic wine. Yeah, I was actually checking out their Instagram last night and they've posted some photos of the construction. Yeah process or progress of this new winery so check them out i can't wait to go visit one day i mean you know it not? will happen it will happen the world we live in maybe they can advance the construction during covid i hope so have you been to their tasting room off of not. the beltway in hammerley no oh it's so awesome it's very intimate um that's where i did my original story with ryan a couple years ago and uh for all those baseballs mamas uh dads and grandparents and caregivers it's right up there by baseball usa so on your way home you can just <laughs> pop in there, you know, and it's good to know. It's yeah. good facts to know. I'll grab a bottle for dinner. <laughs> but they're rosé, they're blanc de blanc. There's so many of them that I'm a big fan of. Cool. And yeah. we're going to we're going to get to know them a little better a little later on in today's show. So and this cheers. is nice, isn't it? It is very nice. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. I could use a glass of wine. After that commute in this morning, hey. you know, at our house, we only live about 10 miles from the station. Right. It's a quick drive. It's maybe 15 minutes without yeah. traffic, and it was sunny and beautiful at our house, and then Mm -hmm. Halfway here, the rains opened up, and it's like the highway turned into a swimming pool. A car actually hydroplaned right in right in front of me and went perpendicular across all the lanes. I thought I wasn't going to be able to stop in time. Really scary. So scary. And I, I was telling you on my way in, too, we were, I was on 59. Just at Hillcroft, there was a big wreck. And I think people see the rain sometimes, and they think, eh, no big deal. I'm going to keep driving 85. That doesn't work out well, ever. I know it you're isn't. biting your tongue. Don't bite your tongue. We can, we, that's what we talk about. I mean, I used to be sort of nervous in L.A. to drive because, you know, L.A. is a massive city. And, I mean, the greater metropolitan area is even larger than Houston, if you can believe it, because the city is so gigantic. And I don't know. I feel like Houstonians are such nice people. But then so many of us get on the highway and turn into monsters. And I, there's always someone who's driving like 100 miles per hour. Right. And I'm like, bro, you can't drive like that every day and not either roll your vehicle or, or injure someone else. And I feel like as long as we're talking about like kindness and being good to each other and being good citizens, wearing a mask, I don't know. How about we just slow down a little bit on the highway? My favorite trick on the highway is when, you know, you're just cruising around, along on your merry way, driving, and somebody's coming up. You could see them behind you. Yeah. Speeding up. Yeah. And ready to, like, crash in behind you. Yeah, and I'm like, And then they what? get right, right up behind you. Are you going to drive through my car or what? And then they turn. Yeah. And, or then they change then lanes. Then they change lanes. And I'm like, thinking, almost, the, the number of times I feel like I've almost been clipped. Um, on my car. You know, so my car actually has cameras recording at all times. It's actually kind of cool. Like, yeah. because it's recording what's in front of the car on either side and behind. And recently, Brandon and I were driving through Rice Village. And you know, there are a lot of four-way stops yeah. in Rice Village. 
but at one of these little intersections, uh, the car right in front of us was T-boned because someone blew through a stop sign. And we thought, oh my gosh, did we just see what we thought we saw? We played it back on the thing. Sure enough, the car there blew through the stop sign. We emailed the girl the footage and oh, it was thankfully. good to go. But people are so busy either speeding or on their phones or doing, I don't know what behind the wheel. And that's something that I will never understand. As nice as we are here in Houston, why are we so mean on the roads? I don't know. People lose their minds. They lose their minds, they right? Do. Actually, so did you hear about this study? Houston was actually named one of the rudest cities in I, Texas. Not one of, the rudest six the? city in Texas. Yeah, according to the Allot Travel website. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about this. <laughs> the study says millions of people crammed into one hot, humid place. Okay. The traffic is so bad, it's recommended you don't drive. But if you do drive, you get stuck in that awful weather. Huh. The article also features the rudest city in every state. Well, that's fascinating. Maybe because we're one of the biggest, so we're, we're a scapegoat. I just think that that's a little, I mean, I don't know. I don't think we're, I don't think we're a root, the rudest city. I really don't. What would you say would be the rudest city in Texas? Oh, I don't want, oh, in Texas? Yeah. Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say most stuck up. I said rudest. And both. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. We were just in Dallas over the weekend and just they are awful. No I'm, kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We didn't see anyone. I mean, we didn't really interact with the locals. We were just like at home. I chilling. know. It's funny though. My mom kept singing this song to me when she found out Brand and I were headed to Dallas. She kept singing this song about like the big D. Yeah, going the to. The big D, the big D. Do you yeah. know the song? Yeah, isn't that the, the about getting a divorce, right? No? No, I think it's about Dallas. Oh. Dal Dallas is known as the Big D. Right, no, I know, but I thought the song was about, no? Is the song about divorce? I don't know, no. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe my mom was trying to hint something to me. About what? I don't <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess you're right. B the Dallas is known as the Big D, but I, for some reason, thought that the song had something to do with being divorced or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But our producer's saying it's Mark Chestnut, who's the artist. But is the song actually about divorce? No, going through the Big D. It's about it going to it's Dallas. About Dallas. See, when I was younger, my mom always called me Big D. I I see. And then when we when we were in Dallas like a year ago, we bought this T-shirt that said like Big D, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. How did they know this was my name? <laughs> How did they know? <laughs> and then I was oh. like, <laughs> and I was, Brandon right. was like, hate you mail. can't, I can you can't wear mail. this shirt around. You can't wear this shirt around. And I said, why? Dallas, the Big D. Yeah. I don't know. I'm very confused now. So am I. <laughs> Well, according to the BBC, <laughs> speaking of the BBC, <laughs> there are some benefits to being grumpy. So here on Houston Life, we consistently hear from our viewers, and I know we haven't really done much of it over the past few months because, you know, after Just timing. the timing, sure. and COVID and race relations and all of that, we felt like highlighting the complainers on our show. Which, by the way, they are still complaining. Still complaining, but all of you, if you're on Facebook or Instagram or you just live on planet Earth, you probably encounter these horrible people. Who knew before COVID, by the way, there were so many horrible people on planet Earth? Wear your masks, people. Wear your mask, Karen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we, we haven't really done it in a while, but don't you find that so many of our viewers are constantly saying, oh my gosh, we love What's Your Problem Wednesday. We love hearing about the voicemails and the rude messages you get on the show. And we sort of... Still, I think we feel conflicted and weird about sharing them, right? A little bit, a little bit, because some, I mean, you know, where the bottom line is we, we have thick skin and we get it. We know that, you know, it's not, people are sometimes having a bad day and it's easier to lash out at somebody else than deal with what you have going on. Yeah. I get it, I get it. And we all have bad days, okay? But um, some people say like highlighting and, and giving them a public platform i.e. you and I talking about the information that we get and the, the correspondence. Like recently, remember that letter that I got mailed here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, snail mail. And the return address was the station address. So, you know, that's a red flag yeah, right red there. Flag, that's yeah. somebody's... No actual return address. And uh, the cursive on the envelope makes me think that this is somebody... <laughs> 
that knows better. Let's just say that. Who's been around for a long time. She's been around a minute. And she was very upset with me. Very upset with Why me. Why was she so mad? Refresh my memory. Um, because I wore a sweatshirt that said Queen of Quarantine. It was like in Barbie writing. This was like March. I don't even, March. But why is that a bad thing? She was very upset. I don't know oh. what happened. Did you take that letter? Did you take it? I she was, it how dare file. you? There was a lot of how dare you's in it. Never signed it, but addressed to me, and it said personal on the, on the envelope. Very personal. Very personal. So but what it. a coward. Like, sign the letter. If you don't want me to know where you live, at least put your name on sign it. Sign the letter, Karen. Yeah. We already know who you are anyway. We stand behind your angry grumpiness. It's, you know, after those anonymous letters go through our fingerprint analysis department, mm -hmm. and we have a very sophisticated way of tracking people down. We do. Um, maybe that, that woman never noticed the cameras parked outside her house. Probably not, or the yeah. unmarked car. Yeah. I think we should send her or a Or marked car. car. <laughs> <laughs> KPRC. <laughs> What do you mean? We're just sitting here. <laughs> there was, um, well, I mentioned this, maybe I mentioned it on the show when Lauren Kelly was filling in while you were away, but I got one of those handwritten letters and this woman was really going off like, you have no knowledge of fabrics. And she, she. Of fabrics? She attacked you and she attacked me. Oh, is this the sweater one? And was like, how dare you wear a sweater or a suit during the summer? Sometimes this studio is like, an industrial refrigerator. It can be yes. freezing cold. And by the way, I'm an adult and I, I can choose, that. I dress myself every day. So yeah. sorry if you don't like my sweaters during the summer. I did wear this little paint by numbers short sleeve shirt today. So I'm sure she's super happy. Because no, well, no, it's not appropriate for the rain. How could you wear short sleeves in the rain? How could you do that? But here's the thing. Have you ever heard of like summer cashmere, summer sweaters, Ooh, it sounds... a wrap? They're still being sold currently in the stores. I need to get one Susan, of Susan, or whatever your name is. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Karen, for sure. <laughs> well, so oftentimes, one of the things that we reflect on when we get these notes is the intention of sending someone like a nasty letter, right? You, I guess you hope that we're going to just be like sobbing at our desks, drinking out of the bottle. I... Usually I have to like suppress my laughter. I have to contain my laughter. I know. And it's like, oh my gosh, like this person is really, really not having a good day. No. I guess. And and I like to reread them in their voice. You know, because I'll read it first and then think like, I can't believe you took time out of your day I know. to do all of this, to pen to paper, the stamp, address the envelope, find a, a <laughs> mailbox. I don't know. Put your clothes pin on your mailbox so your, you know, postman can take the letter. And so our fingerprint department doesn't find you. Right. But we always do. But we do. You know, that's, my, that's why we're my mom business. has always said one of her favorite sayings is you should never take offense when offense isn't intended you know because we all have interactions with someone you know, once in a while or maybe on a daily basis if you have host a TV show where people come up to you and they're like oh wow you are much skinnier in person oh you're so much prettier in real life your clothes look so much more expensive in real life they look so cheap on TV oh wow thanks for that compliment what so my mom has always said Never take offense when, you know, when someone, it's a fool who takes offense when offense isn't intended. But then she also says, but it's a fool who takes offense when offense is intended. Right, so don't give them the time of day. Like, don't give them the satisfaction. Like whether you're trying to insult me or not, yes. my mom always ingrained that in me. So I'm not sure if that's why now I, I sort of laugh <laughs> when right. I get these letters. But oftentimes though, a, Oftentimes, at the end of the day, um, I don't know, I, I think pity is the feeling, like the, the emotion that bubbles up to yes. the surface. And even in June, like every June when we talk about Pride Month or sometimes when I mention Brandon, Brandon and I hugged each other on the show last week when he came by. Uh Yes. Oh, oh and I someone saw, was like, I'm very upset what is about the that. agenda you're promoting? I'm sorry, like, this is the guy I live with. And that's, you know, I'm, so I'm on the receiving end a lot, and as you are, from these nasty, nasty messages. But anyway, I just, at the end of the day, I think, same thing as you, how could someone spend so much time just being nasty? And so I feel pity, most yes, of all. Yes, most of the time, Not too. Sadness. Um, and then I also like to assume best intentions. So sort of, you know, don't make this about you. Or sometimes people are kind of just in their own fog and then they react 
to you, right? Be, th uh, making us feel like, well, what did I do to you? Why, why are you coming at me when it's something that happened in their world that they've got the knives out? That's you know? true. That's so, true. You never know what someone's going through. In those cases, bless your heart comes in handy quite often. I love it. I do too. The phrase that goes both ways. I know, I love it. It can mean something good or something horrible. You decide. <laughs> <laughs> so we maybe later this week uh, we'll have time to get into some of the benefits of being grumpy because it turns out when people are nasty, I guess there is some sort of, I don't know, psychological benefit to doing that. To being grumpy? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Someone wrote the study. Someone, someone took time to do that. Yeah, I mean, you can maybe have a more stable marriage and higher earnings if you're grumpy. If you're grumpy, but who wants to be around you? I couldn't. No. You know, Brandon has never even raised his voice at me. There are times when he gets quiet, when I think maybe he's going stir crazy from working it from home yeah. for months, you know? But, he, but we never, like, fight. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I cannot it? say I don't raise my voice because I, I have levels of, my, my voice is already raised. And so if I'm excited and talking about, a sto I told you the story how one time I was telling Orlando a story, we were in the car. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I've got the hands going and I'm up here and I'm, the voice is carrying and, and Connor or AJ, one of them said, stop yelling at daddy. And I was like, I'm not yelling. You know, I turn around and then I'm elevated even more. But, you know. I, it's just... So, Lewis and I, one of my best friends, we used to meet for coffee in L.A. every single morning, and people would think we were fighting. And one day, someone came up and was like, oh, I didn't want to say hi. Like, you guys were in this heated argument. But the thing was, we would get up and we would reenact the what scene. had happened to us at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. And so we'd be doing a lot of this. And it, it looked like we were fighting, but we were just so excited to, to tell, tell each story. other what had happened. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So funny. I love it. Oh, cheers. cheers to that. Cheers to being animated. Animated and not loud. Angry. Be animated, <laughs> not angry. How's that? So one thing that we love about living in and around H-Town, there are murals all over the city. I love this. Yes. I think if you live here, sometimes maybe you take it for granted. But I remember when I moved here four years ago, I very quickly saw, holy cow, there's a mural there and there and there. So many great spots in the city, not just downtown. Yeah. And that's our question for the day. We want you guys to write in, share pictures of your favorite murals, and please send us the location as well and uh, we're also going to chat a little more about murals on today's program Lauren Kelly has a really fun assignment she's telling us about this brand new website that combines all the info you need to find these murals and arts installations around town so you, you essentially go it's one click and uh, it's all right there at your fingertips and this concept has really exploded all across the city where I think four years ago they were kind of few and far between and now there's so many to choose from and so many hidden spots it's such a great great thing to do especially now if you're looking to just get out of the house and be outside great Instagram photos as well also guys coming up next it's wine club Wednesday we're returning with bottles that give back we're gonna share how you can get this three pack discounted with a special HL promo code Cheers. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today's Wine Club Wednesday is all about wines that support a great cause. That's right. Nice Winery is a small family-owned winery right here in Houston that loves to make wine and also help the community in the process. And here to share three wines that benefit local charities, sommelier, winemaker, and wine educator, Ryan Levy. Welcome back to the show. Hey, y'all. How are you? Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. It's so great to see you. We've been sipping on this 2019 Ariana, and I have to tell you, this is a fantastic white. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, you know, the, the idea of the Ariana was to create a wine that would give back to a local charity that was created by my good friend, Annie Garcia, um, to print 3D models for infants who were struggling with congenital heart defects, a 3D model of their heart. And, uh, and so I've actually got a little, uh, a little 3D model of an infant's heart there. Why? And, oh my uh, gosh. and so that's, that's where all of the money from the, uh, the sale of the Ariana goes to, is to help 
uh, practice make perfect for surgeons, especially here in the Texas Medical Center, that are trying to save babies' lives that are born with congenital heart defects. That is jaw-dropping to actually have a physical example of what a heart looks like at that age. And and this was the daughter of your friend, right? So after she was six weeks old, uh, you discovered that she had this congenital heart defect. And what a great way to give back. Yeah, she, um, you know, Annie, Annie rushed Ariana to the hospital. She was, um, she was blue. She had blue baby syndrome. She had transposition of the great arteries. And, uh, and they were able to do this miraculous surgery. And Annie wanted to find a way to save more babies' lives um, by raising money and creating a foundation called OpHeart. And that was our, uh, our inspiration for creating this, this gorgeous wine, this white wine that we create from grapes, um, Grenache Blanc and Viognier. Those are the grapes that we use in this wine. Oh my gosh, so. it's a delicious wine and that story makes me love it even more. I know, and Ryan, only $24 a bottle. So when, we're, we're, when people hear the kind of grapes that you're using, explain the taste, the, the grapes, and why this floral aroma we're getting, because this really does smell lovely. Yeah, so the reason we blend these two grapes together, Grenache Blanc gives you the crispness and the nice it's acidity that's going to pair really well with food. And then Viognier gives you that beautiful floral nose. So when you stick your nose in there and it smells like a bouquet of flowers, um, that is the Viognier. So those two grapes together give you the yin and the yang, the, the beautiful parts of the wine that we love. And I love this with ceviche. I love this with crab cakes. And our new executive chef at our winery, Randy Penny, has created the perfect pairing with this wine. I've got this gorgeous uh, salmon and oh. tzatziki with, uh, with a cucumber relish on top of it that he prepared that I'm gonna dive into after we get done with this segment. Uh, are you <laughs> no trying fair. to make us jealous? Because it's working. <laughs> well, look, we actually, look, we're sharing the recipe. So mm. if you go online to, to buy this trio and you scroll to the bottom, you can see where you can actually buy our spice blend that we created specifically to pair with this wine. And the recipe is, um, is on that spice blend page. So uh, that's, what the, that's what the recipe looks like. That got sent out to all of our wine club members this month. Awesome. And, uh, but uh, Houston Life wine club members can get it too. I love that. Okay, Ryan, we're gonna move on to the rosé. And I don't know, I, I'm a fan of this rosé. Um, tasted it with you um, last year, I guess it was. And also bought a couple of these bottles because at your recommendation, you said, serve this at Thanksgiving. Hmm. Yeah, I love to kind of squirrel away a case of this wine and hide it from the rest of my family until Thanksgiving, because otherwise in the summer, it all gets drank. Um, and this is a rosé of Pinot Noir. So we make this from grapes down in the Russian River Valley in Sonoma. And, uh, and you, can, you can make rosé from any dark skin grape, but our rosé is completely dry. It's crisp and it pairs really well with food. The other thing to know is all of our wines are sustainable and organically farmed. So this vineyard has no pesticides, no chemicals. Um, the wine has no additives, no sugar in it, which is really rare in the winemaking world. And uh, first of all, I'm alarmed that you and Courtney are hanging out wine tasting without me, but we can talk about that <laughs> later. Uh, but secondly, this is no different than the first in terms of its charitable component. It supports the Emma Jacobs Breast Cancer Foundation, the work of MD Anderson Research. Yeah, so Dr. Anthony Lucci is a researcher at MD Anderson who in so many ways is on the cusp of finding a cure for breast cancer. And every year we, um, we donate all of the proceeds from this rosé to Dr. Lucci's research here in Houston. And we have a big event where we invite people to come and hear Dr. Lucci speak about his research, the research that we're funding with every bottle of rosé. Of course, right now, because of COVID, we've had to postpone that. Um, we were going to do it outside, socially distanced, but. We we thought better and we're gonna wait until there's a time that we can all gather together and hear Dr. Lucci's great research. But you can now still buy the rosé. And, you know, just to make things a little more fun, we're doing a little bit of ex experimenting. We're trying to make some boozy gummies with our rosé. So, uh, so we've been Yum. experimenting. Oh, These are my little word. Wine bottles <laughs> that are actually made with our rosé. And if you taste them, 
that they taste like the rosé because they're actually made with the rosé. Now we're still experimenting. We're still in R and D phase on this, but but look for it coming soon. Okay, how do I get on the R and D development committee? <laughs> I need to be on the you tasting need, committee you need of that. Tasters for that. <laughs> I love that. By the way, the nice rosé is thirty dollars. What a mm. great way to help out a wonderful organization. Okay, our third wine we have here is a Malbec. Ooh, I love a good blend, Ryan. Mm. So this is, what's, what's neat about this wine is, you know, when we first started launching this wine for charitable causes, back in 2017, after Hurricane Harvey, we decided that we wanted to partner, we partnered with HEB so that we could give $10 from every single bottle of our Malbec that we sold, whether it was sold here at our winery or at HEB or online, back to Hurricane Harvey Relief. And in 30 days, we raised $10,000 for the mayor and the county judges uh, Hurricane Harvey Relief Fund with sales of the Malbec. Now, this year, we're using sales of the Malbec to fund a research vineyard here in Houston where we can teach kids and adults about the virtues of sustainable farming, mm. about taking care of our environment, about giving back um, to the land that gives us so much. Um, and a really neat thing about this, I know y'all are drinking this now. I'm gonna grab my glass so that I can drink it with y'all. But look at the back of this bottle, y'all. There's an ingredients list. Oh, I love that. And I challenge people to go find a bottle of wine with an ingredients list on it. Our ingredients, organic Malbec grapes, period. Nothing else. What? And this is this is a wine that has no, no sulfites. It's a wine that has no sugar. It's certified organic. It's certified sustainable. Um, I'm just really proud of, of this wine. And we love to pair this with braised beef short ribs. That's my favorite pairing with the Malbec. I like to pair it with this, just drinking it. <laughs> just kidding, Ryan. Um, what I think is so great is you don't need to decant this either, and you say this could go from bottle to glass for the next couple of years. It can. So this is this is really a drink now wine. Um, it's not. It doesn't need decanting. Although if, if you wanted to decant it for 20 minutes, you're not going to do it any harm. Um, but it really is a a young, fresh wine that's great for food pairing, great for sipping. Um, and, uh, and, and also you feel good about drinking it because sure it is certified organic. Well, there is a reason why you got that Reserve Grand Champion Best of Show saddle behind you, Ryan. It is great to see you, even if it's only digitally for now. But uh, thanks for continuing to do great work and for supporting so many fantastic initiatives in our community. Oh. Oh, well, thanks. You know, it's great to give back. And, and I know y'all talked earlier about uh, about me being able to go to Rice University as a result of the Houston Live Sex Show and Rodeo. So every day I wake up thinking, how do I pay it back? How do I pay it forward? And that's one of the reasons why we make three wines that all of the proceeds go back to charity. And we do so much charitable work because every day I wake up thinking, gosh, hundreds, hundreds of rodeo volunteers helped me to go to college. Who can I help? Uh, and and we, we've all got to pay it back, especially right now um, when it's a time for us to give gratitude and give back. Oh, so well said, Ryan. Thanks mm -hmm. so much for being a friend of the show. Cheers, my friend, and we'll see you soon. By the way, don't forget to grab your own Giving Back Trio. The HL Wine promo code will be good through Sunday at 11.50 p.m. And we have a link on our website to do that. Cheers. We'll be right back. This live. Welcome back, everyone. We've been talking about the murals around town, and we asked you guys to share your mural photos. And look at this. Norma posted this beautiful mural that says Pearland. Wow, that is Gorge. huge. Oh, Gorgeous. Is Catherine favorite. sent this Selena image in. Obviously, Selena is one of our favorites here. Gone for 26 years. Can oh, you believe it? No, I cannot. Danny Allen, friend of the show, he sent in this one, the Go Astros down by Minute Maid Park. That's one of my favorites, too. The boys love this one. Very nice. And I think we have a couple photos uh, you and I submitted as well. This was Brandon outside the wholesale flower market that's near uh, Hutchins and Leland in Edo, East Downtown. Yeah, and uh, this is the boys and I a couple years ago um, over off of Navigation where there's tons and tons of murals. Look how little AJ is there. I know, his little haircut. <laughs> That was so much fun. Um, and I love all of these murals. These are always so fun to do, especially right now. Just go outside, snap a pic, and still ahead, a new website that's going to make it super easy to find hundreds of these Houston murals and art installations around town. Our gal, Lauren Kelly, is out and about. She's going to join us live from downtown with details when we come back. Looking good, Mama. Yeah, look at all that color.
Welcome back to Houston Life. This morning when I was coming into the building, the lightning, the thunder Crazy. was so intense, people's car alarms were going off. Let's see if this insanity will continue. Meteorologist Justin Stapleton. Hey, bud. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I was getting busy this morning as well. We were rocking here in the studio. We could hear it shaking the building a little bit, but uh, it's improving. That's the good news. We could actually see the Southwest Freeway and back in towards the West Loop where that wasn't the case about, mm, let's say, you know, an hour ago. And notice that the temperatures in the upper 80s where they've not seen any rain today at the coast and then as you get up towards Bush Airport out in Katy, that's where we're seeing some scattered showers as well. So it's going to be real hit and miss. If you've seen the rain, you're cooler. If not, it's going to be another steamy day. We still have this aerial flood advisory that's right in through here. This is basically from Sugarland working its way towards, uh, let's say, just outside the West Loop. This is until 145, so I expect this to expire uh, probably within the next 10 minutes. And then this is our next big storm. In fact, I've got an update on this, guys, from the National Hurricane Center. They have upgraded it to 80% chance this could turn into a tropical depression or tropical storm. If it does, it'll become tropical storm Hannah. For us, the timing on this, I think, is going to bring in the heavy rain basically Friday afternoon, Friday night into Saturday before we'll see things kind of clear out. So, Stroh's going to be on TV. My guess is grab one of those three wines over there, which you two will share with me, mm. and watch opening day. Why uh -huh. just one? Yeah. Can we grab all three? I meant all three. <laughs> I don't think there will be any left to share. I dude. know. Sorry. A lot of peeps in my house are excited for Friday, let me just tell you. Oh, yeah. Justin, great to see you, my friend. Stay safe. We've teamed up with Igloo for a very cool contest. I know you all love to win stuff, right? So we're giving away an Igloo prize pack. Listen to this, valued at more than 400 bucks. Wait, I thought we got to keep all this when it showed no, up to honey. the office. We're no. giving it away? Yes. Oh, too bad. Okay, well, <laughs> all of you have a chance to win right now by visiting our website, HoustonLife.tv. The rules and regulations are posted there, plus a detailed list of what is included. Again, value is more than 400 bucks, Courtney. Y'all, the stuff in there is so awesome. And BTW, Lauren is taking her igloo gear on the go today. She's on an adventure around Houston, even despite the rain. What you got there, girl? Love it. Yeah, girl, I got my thermos right here. I am prepared for any weather that's coming my way. And I have to tell y'all, full disclosure, I am on my cell phone with this amazing new technology out here this morning. And we're downtown at Made in Commerce, and we are talking about the coolest new website. I know, being from Houston, you've always wanted to know where your favorite murals are located, but you're like, I, hope, I have no idea where they are. Guess what? HoustonMuralMap.com has everything covered for you. Hundreds of hundreds of murals around town. Oh, look, there goes the Metro Rail as we speak. That's, that's how live we are. Hundreds of murals on there, the hardest information, the location information, and lots more. And I am here with Elia Quiles. She is the Up Art Studio co-owner. And she's given us some details about how awesome this website really is and how simple it is to you uh, to use. Can you just tell us like the easiest parts about this website? Well, the, east, the website is very easy to navigate. As soon as you get to the home page, you see the map, and you can immediately start clicking on things. You can start zooming in to the area that you're interested. But to make things easier, we also added an artist tab and a um, and a communities tab, so that you can, you know, check out your artist. I'm sorry, check out the murals from your favorite artist all in all in one spot. Or you can go to an area, let's just say downtown, like we're in now, and see what's in the area around you. So, Elia, you did not create this on your own. You had some help uh, with Alex Barber, absolutely. the website developer, the brains behind the computer website. <laughs> How fun of a task! How many hours did you spend looking around for Houston murals? Well, we had a, a good base to start with uh, for all the data based on the previous site for Houston Mini Murals. So we had that uh, with initial set of about 250, but then adding on another 600. So we're just shy of 1,000 at the moment uh, to pull all that together from different sources, from people that provide us information about all, these, all this amazing work around town to put it all into one spot. And we've got more coming. So in the next few weeks, we'll probably be at about another 1,100 or 1,200 total and part of the site design is also to encourage people to send us murals they find around town. So if you find a mural and it's on the site, we have a form so you can go ahead and fill that out and send it to us with the artist information, who you are as a submitter, along with the location and even any photos that you might take of it as well. So we can take all that information, 
and put it up on the site uh, and credit you as well as the artist. Awesome. You've given us so much information. And you've also got the little mini murals as well. Yes. And if you see something wrong with a mural, like it's been updated or changed or it's no longer there, you can easily Absolutely. submit questions. Absolutely, yes. And you can hit the submit button and you can address all those things you can address. Um, if we tag the wrong location, we tag the wrong artist, or, you know, and I've already had people reach out, hey, that actually wasn't me, or I did that in collaboration with someone else, can we get that person credit? So we're happy to update those things as well. Very cool. HoustonMuralMap.com. I just want to show you, we're going to get into the details of where we're at in just a second. But just to be downtown, this bright, colorful artistry right here, we're going to get the scoop on who's behind it, the details on where you can find it, and that's coming up after the break. You don't want to miss it, you guys. Be right back. downtown you guys and with the help of houstonmuralmap.com i was easily able to find this one right here it's called produce row and the artist is by dual and i'm gonna have my friends that have been joining us elia and alex who are in charge of the website they're gonna give us a little bit of information just about the artist and what you actually can find if you were to click on the website tell us about this painting so this is called this mural is called produce row and it's by the artist named dual and this mural was painted as an homage to Commerce Street, which we're on. It is, you know, originally this was the site of the uh, first uh, farmer's markets in Houston, right here along Buffalo Bayou. And so this uh, mural is an homage to that produce and other things that were sold here on this very corner. That's so cool. And how long will one mural last in one location? It's hard. That's a hard thing to say because it really depends on the artist and what kind of materials they use and whether they prep the surface properly. Um, typically, we will use high quality industrial primers and paints in order for the uh, and clear coats so that the mural lasts longest. But sometimes you'll see them fading out in a year, um, and then the others will last up to 20, 30 years. It just depends on, on how they were done. Now, Alex, on the website, what do you think is one or two of Houston's most popular murals that people click on the most? I'm not sure if we've seen the traffic on what's popular so far yet. That would be actually a fun idea to actually add to Probably the like, site. we love Houston. The right. biscuit paint wall, maybe the turtle suit paintings, all of those are some of my favorites. Yeah, I'm trying to think, because I mean, right now, when you come to the site, the first thing you see are the, besides the, the map of all the murals in the city, are the items that have been added most recently to the site. So as people submit things, we'll, we'll show them the latest murals that have been added. Up so you guys can see this full shot of the painting. It's on the corner of Main and Commerce. You cannot miss it. It's right next to U of H downtown. And one other thing that I want to point out is not only is all the information for the big, big, colorful murals on this website, they also do the mini murals. So if you have ever seen the little boxes, there's over two on, see that right there, that little owl eye? If you've ever seen the little mini boxes, those are part of the QC mural map as well. You can just click on and and find the, the right mural, your favorite one. Elia and Alex, thank you so much for the time and, Absolutely. and for yeah, creating the you. website. It's such a wonderful idea, and I, I just know that Houstonians love it, and we love to see these bright, colorful pieces go up all the time. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, Courtney, I'm going to have to go and make so many more stops now to all of these murals now that I know where to find them. Have you guys ever seen this one? You know what? I live not far from that one, and I'm seeing it for the first time live on the air. So thanks for teaching us, Lauren. Great to see you, yeah, girl. Go blow up that Instagram. Cool. Good pictures. I didn't realize she was live from her cell phone. That's so really cool. cool, too. I know. Jack of all trades, that Lauren Kelly. After the break, guys, discover the skincare line that's customized, listen to this, for Houston's climate. Ooh, we no need joke. That. When we come back. Okay, we always say humidity is good for the skin, right? But it also, the heat and humidity could be wreaking havoc on our skin. A skincare line made in France promises to help. It is called Pour Moi Climate Smart Skincare, and the founder, Uli Hasleher, has spent decades on these customized products, and Uli is joining us now. Uli, welcome to Houston Life. I hear, in addition to founding the product, you're also a very satisfied customer yourself. So tell us all about it. Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, I say all the time, seeing is believing, <coughs> so I made a real life demonstration on my hands. On this hand, I use Climate Smart Skincare, and on this hand, I use a regular moisturizer. And look, Derek, at the difference. All my brown spots are gone. All that weathered aging skin has transformed itself. Doesn't look like the grandma anymore that I am. <laughs> oh. I don't think you're a grandma. <laughs> you do not look like oh, a I grandmother. <laughs> so talk to us about how this works because we just saw the before and after with your hand. Clearly your skin tone was evened out. It looked absolutely beautiful. They always say too that the dead giveaway are the hands. So, so talk to us about the process of how it affects the skin. Yes, I got the results on my one hand and also on my face, of course. What is Climate Smart? Think of it as anti aging skincare for your zip code. Listen, we all purchased skincare um, in the last 50 years, either by skin type or by age, but we didn't really get these extraordinary results. Why? because skin radically changes in different climates. And that's not just me saying this, um, Courtney and Derek, this is actually medical research mm -hmm. that discovered this. So what we found is when you customize um, skincare according to the climates you live in and the climates you travel to, you get extraordinary results. Let me demonstrate this to you. So let's take a magic ride to the high desert. Now I'm here in very thin, very dry air. So what my skin needs here is totally different than when I am in Houston, where it's hot, humid, you have a thunderstorm today, <laughs> and it's very heavy air. It's, you know, it is so true. Absolutely. And by the way, Uli, is we, despite the humidity that we live in, let's call it, 12 months a year, um, <laughs> we still need to moisturize our skin. I mean, there still needs to be a skincare component regardless of the climate that we're living in. Exactly. Actually, high humidity is not good for your skin. Think about lying in a bath for 10 minutes. When you go out, your skin is all wrinkled up mm. and feels dry yeah. because skin is supposed to be waterproof. So you need a skincare that is specifically formulated to move that humidity off your skin and at the same time makes all these anti-aging ingredients, encapsulated vitamin C, encapsulated vitamin A, really work for the repair and rejuvenation process. This took us 10 years to get these formulas right because I don't think uh, skincare, anti-aging skincare for humidity has ever been done before. Well, and anyone who has moved to Houston from another part of town, yes. um, I, I mean, you know, on day one, oh, wow, it's like you landing on another planet for a minute. Your skin feels totally different. I know you are getting rave reviews from customers that you have, Uli, right here in Houston. But uh, let's talk about some of the science uh, behind this, because you've received a patent. This is not just some skin cream that people can buy anywhere. You've received a patent because it is so innovative. and the these, these results were actually calculated and tabulated by a completely independent lab. So explain this process to us. Yes. So I actually have my U.S. patent with me because I'm coming from my office to you. Um, and I'm just pointing this out is because it's very, very difficult and only a handful of these patents have ever been awarded in beauty. Why? You have to prove that it actually works and you have to prove that it's completely different than anything in the market. So this is really works and it's innovative. And then the independent study has really verified this. I can, you know, say we got an A plus beauty report card because it's a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. Everybody gets this extraordinary results because now your skincare works exactly how your skin changes in the climate. It's actually, you know, a lot of people I talk to, they say, why hasn't it done before? It makes so much sense. It really does because it depends on where we live. I noticed, you know, when we go to Utah or something like that, your lips are chapped, your hands are chapped, the inside of our nose. Of course, our skin is going to react differently yeah. to the climates that we're yes. in. Uli, let's talk about the product that you have for us today. We want to dive more into that. Yes. So what, all you need for useful skin in Houston is our three-step rotating system 
Texas. So even if it's three steps, you're actually getting four products. Why? Because the third step, the last step, you get two day creams and you rotate them to the daily weather. So most of the time, as you were saying, it will be our tropical day cream that is specific to help skin adapt, repair and protect in a hot and humid weather you know of that day but when it gets cooler and it gets a little bit drier or you're taking a trip in texas a road trip to drier parts of texas you rotate that day to the temperate day cream and voila you have beautiful skin but here's where you get step number one is the hydrating balancer it's like of drinking your first class of powerful vitamin uh, water in the morning it's your first layer of anti-aging ingredients step number two is the serum it makes your smart skin even smarter and then as i said step number three you all lock it in with the day cream of today's weather that that adapts, repairs, and protects your skin to that daily weather. And, and it really works like a charm. Uli, we have some info for our special offer right now on the screen. This is good through August 10th. You can get the Climate Smart three-step rotating system valued at $150 for only 75 bucks, and you get the clarifying polish valued at only 30, or uh, valued at 32 bucks for only $24. Uli, thank you so much. You look great. Thank you and stay safe throughout the thunderstorm. Okay, guys, coming up on the show tomorrow, hurricane preparedness for dogs with the pet whisperer, Stephanie Bennett. Yeah, this is a very important topic this time of year as you're putting together your yes. emergency plan for your family. Please do not forget. First year for us. About your pets. I know. Yeah, also, what to do this weekend, Sawyer Yards, drive-in movie theater. Guys, check this out. First of all, it's one of my favorite parts of town. The movie theater drive-in thing, they have got it figured out. So we're gonna learn more about that. Can't wait. Oh, this was fun. Where's our wine? Where did our wine go? Somebody took it. Justin. It's over there. Did Justin Stapleton take it? Oh. Mm.